And how long did you work there? I worked there until maybe maybe four years, I think, or three years. No, mm. less than that. And then I goes to work in hotel line. Mm. Because hotel line uh, feel a bit better. And also you can get uh, some promotions. And then they provide you a lunch. You don't have to pay. All those things, yeah. Which hotel was this? The first one I worked Sheraton Hotel. Uh. Quite far. And the second one is the Raffles, lah, right? Yeah, the second one Raffles <laughs> Hotel. <laughs> was it easy to get a job in the ho uh, hotel industry? That terms not really. Mm. No, no. It used to have like you go you go for the school, but when I apply the job, they say like maybe they need a lot of people to work. They need the staff, so yeah, they give you three months under probation. So when you go that three months, and then you get permanent job. Maybe I should ask you, what was the job in the hotel? I working uh like a cafe in the hotel. They got cafe, mm. restaurant. So I worked that department, taking orders, clean the tables, go to the kitchen, serve. More or less, you take the order mm. and look after the customer. Yeah. This is a very different job from the factory one, right? Different. Uh, hotel line, you more, you meet a lot of people, and then meet customers from different country, and uh, more enjoy working. I like to meet a lot of people when you talk a lot. Sometimes we hear that you know very hard to work in the service industry, right? Because people expectation and patience. Was that difficult for you? Was difficult, very difficult for me. But uh, because I enjoy, I enjoy do the job, so I stick in and uh, I don't mind. Sometimes customer can make you cry. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah, some nasty customer. And uh, whatever you serve, whatever you talk nice, they're still not happy. They think because I pay you do the job. Uh, yeah, you get some customers not nice, but what to do? I enjoy the job. I like to meet a lot of people, different country. That's for me, so I don't mind. You know, sometimes I go home, I cry a bit. I, I forget it. Yes, when you're young, it's not easy to work mm. like that. Mm. If you feel a bit older. Now I work. It doesn't matter. I can tell them, who cares? You know. But when you're young, the first job you get, you feel depressing, you know, you cry and what to do. But I enjoy it. That's why I stick there. Am I right that when you came to Perth just before you retired, right? You, you were also working in a restaurant. Was it a restaurant or a cafe? Yes, one? restaurant. Yeah. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think there's a difference working, you know, in Singapore and in Perth? The difference is like in Perth, no matter how old you are, you can do the job. They still employ you. It doesn't matter how old you, you work, how old are you. But Singapore is a bit more, probably only take the young one working in a hotel line, but not the old one. Mm. <laughs> yeah, here it doesn't matter even... Cafe or restaurants, it's not much different. Unless you work in the hotel, you know what I mean? Like normal cafe, the sea call restaurant, it's easy to get the job. When I say nasty customer, like um uh some I think sometimes they get angry somewhere and then they come to the cafe, they they trying to make you so bad, you know. <laughs> what were the enjoyable parts of uh doing working in the hotel line in the restaurants and cafe what were the enjoyable things i think make a lot of friends mm. and you, you learn the experience you learn something different which you rather than you only meet where you live like chinese malay indian but this more abroad you learn 
from a lot nationality, you know what mm. I mean? Young, and then from other country, make you aware that, oh, this is, this is where people come from, you know what I mean? At the time, did you ever think, you know, you meet a Australian and marry the Australian and move abroad? Oh, no, I didn't. Didn't, didn't expect that. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, uh, you know, how, how did you meet Stephen? Oh, that's my the other job. I left Sheraton mm. Hotel. Mm. Then I worked uh, because I got more confidence and more experience. So I applied job at the uh, Raffles Hotel, the old Raffles Hotel. Mm. So I worked there and uh, and a good job to good pay. And then uh, after a few years, I worked there and then I met Stephen there. This would be 19, uh, what, uh, 70... We got married in 81, 70, late 70. Mm. What was he doing at the time? Me? Him. Him? Mm. Oh, he first time came to Singapore, have a holiday. That's what he told me. <laughs> first time with the brother and the friends. The friends actually asked him to come holiday in Singapore. So both of them. He said, why not? Never been to Singapore before. So came with a friends and uh, that's the first time for him in Singapore. So I met him with we shall serve him a drink. And uh, yeah. And he get drunk. <laughs> that doesn't sound like him, right? <laughs> <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Doesn't sound like him. But uh, yes, yeah, since he's there for only a few days. And uh, just give an address and send letter and uh, and that's it. Ah, so you all kept in touch afterwards. Yeah, we get in touch and he called me most all the times, and then we we send letter and that's get uh in touch more than a year. And you got married in that year. So married in the year. Yeah, wow. one year in November we know each other and then we got married in November. That's it. Yep, doesn't take long. One year we got married. You're very decisive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and uh, now you got three kids. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Three kids, yeah. 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 When did long... you move to Perth? Uh, after I got straight, married. Straight away, yeah. Yeah, after we, because you only have holiday mm. left for the few weeks. And then we got married. We came back here. I've, yeah. I came here. Yeah. You're right. Was there any discussion that, you know, he could stay in Singapore or something like that? No, the visa at that time, Sony, he got, uh, mm. uh, not just a visa, the holiday, he only have two weeks holiday from the job he do, when you have two weeks. And then we got married, we came back straight away. How did your parents feel about it? Uh... They said, because I have to move here, far away from them. But uh, my mom said, you got married, so just go and take care. And then get in touch with my parents. Give a call once a month, you know. It was sad, but uh, I said, yeah, just do it. <laughs> just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Once you got married, what to do, just do it. <laughs> Yeah, at the time, do you know anything about Australia? No. <laughs> no. Yeah. But things, I came here before I married. You did? Okay. Yeah, just for a whole day with friends. Uh, a friend who sent me a ticket and I came here two weeks. and uh, But just stay with friends. So, but of course, it's lonely, you know what I mean? Mm. By yourself, you got no family, no friends, and Perth must have been quite different in those days. More quiet. It mm. doesn't have much, much houses. More quiet than now. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Used to be so quiet. Very quiet. Where, where did you house... stay? Still, still in the suburbs, right? Was it yeah, still, still the, the same. Yeah, yeah, still the same. I know we 
we move different houses, different mm. places, but still ar around close here where we live. Oh, is that right? Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Around yeah. the Wa Waikiki area. Yes, yeah, not far. Were there many Asians at the time? Not really. Not much. Not much Asian. But now it's more. A mm. lot. A lot, yeah. Mm. Even the Asian food hall, you can get anywhere now. Yeah, now you can, right? There are Asian yeah, anywhere, uh, yeah. food stores and all that. Yeah, it's easy to get. At the time, did you meet any or make any Asian friends? Yes, I do. Like where I work or I go to the shopping center and uh, you can see the Asian face. And uh, I just approached myself. I said, how are you? Where are you from? And then we start connect each other and you know, start have a friends. Mm. You know? Like you go to show, oh, some, sometime maybe free, catch up, have a coffee. You know, something like that, yeah. Yeah, that's very much part of your character, right? It'll be friendly, yeah. sociable. Yes, yeah. yeah. I think it would have been quite difficult if you were, you know, more shy or, you know, more quiet. You're not going to get any friends. <laughs> you have to uh, friend with other people and talk who they are. Sometimes you learn from how they speak, you know, straight away, or they're from China, or they're from Singapore, or from Malaysia. You know the style of they speak. Mm, the accent, right. Yeah, accent, yes. Yeah. What were the difficulties, you know, when you first came to Perth, you know, to settle down? and w Was finding a job difficult? I didn't find any job that time because uh, after a few months, when I, after we got married, about three months, then I fall pregnant. So I don't think that time to look for the job, you know what I mean? More or less stay at home. Mm. And then you need how to drive to, you know what I mean? Mm. To go anywhere. And uh, Stephen is good. Tell me you need to learn how to drive. And uh, or as if I work, then you be stay at home. You stuck at home. You know what I mean? Yeah. Did you learn how to drive in Singapore? No. No, no. this is in Perth, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's encouraged me to learn how to drive. I remember Steve saying that in the early days, y'all didn't have a car, right? So no. you would actually take a bus to go do your groceries. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is, in fact, the groceries is not far away. Uh, unless uh, if I'm to go to get more Asian dishes, Asian dish, I have to go to Fremantle, catch the bus. Mm. You know? That time you got no train, we have to catch two buses. Nowadays, a train and easy, you go anywhere you can get. Mm. Even now at Cole, Woolly, they got Asian dishes, they sell this, like rendangs, or chili, anything you can get. Dry noodles, easy to get. Of course, you cannot get uh, a lot of food. They sell only small item. Yeah, I want to ask you more about the food. So when you went to Perth, you still try to cook the food that you know you had in Singapore, right? Yeah. I cook everything. <laughs> you can't. Like Singapore, easy. You go to... Uh, under flex, you can buy uh, apple, apple, you can buy nasi, anything, but not here. I learned everything myself. But of course, I asked my sister and uh, give me the ingredients. Sometimes when they come visit here, I said, you bring curry powder, you bring this, you bring that. Now you don't have to. You sell everything now. Yeah. Easy to get now. So you, was, you had to learn everything, right? To do everything on your own. Basically. He is. <laughs> I'm not lazy now. <laughs> In a way, it's good. You learn things that... But, but now I'm not working, so I can learn a lot of things. What kind of dish do you cook? Oh, I mix. Asian. I cook rendangs. I cook curry. Stephen don't mind. He eat anything. You know? I cook curry. I cook dalcha. Uh, rendangs. Lao lama. Lao asam pedas. Anything. But I mix, I have uh, twice a week of Asians and then I have Western food. Mm. You also so learn we how mix. to cook Asian, uh, the Western food. 
Yes. Yeah. What? What? Like what? Rose, rose lamb, and uh, because I never cook rose lamb in Singapore. The whole leg you cook, put in uh-huh. the oven. Yeah. So, I'm good on that now. You know, rose potato, rose veggie, all you learn from that is good. Yeah. I haven't tried your rose lamb yet. So you have to come here one day, and Stephen also good on that rose. Mm. Yes. Yeah. What were the things you have to kind of get used to in Perth? I think uh, get used like uh, I have more freedom now. You know what I mean? And uh, I can go anywhere by myself. Mm. I can catch the train. I can catch the bus, and I ride bicycles. I get more. I get used to the road here, and I'm relaxed. I enjoy. Was there something about Australia that you know you found a bit strange in the beginning? Yes. Yep. Yep. Found out like uh, I'm alone. I have no one. Is uh, of course it's a little bit scared. You know, you surrounded all those uh, doesn't have Asian. <laughs> They're all white people. <laughs> It's different from Singapore because where you live, all surrounded, close each other. Mm. Here is more, a more independent, separate. You know what I mean? I think it's fine. Mm, mm. I know they has people always talk about um, some of my friend that like, they doesn't know much about Asian. They think everyone is Asian, but they realize Asian it come from. Malaysia, from China, from Singapore, you know what I mean? They think they're all Asian, but they're different where they come from. What's the most enjoyable thing about living in Australia? To relax. Hmm. I can, like, now I can, uh, I don't have to go out, you know what I mean? I can stay at home, have a cup of coffee, have a lunch on my backyard, under my pergolas, you know what I mean? I don't have to go up all the times. That's make me, I feel more relaxed. On weekend, you can go up, have a coffee, you do your running, you do your walking. But most of the time, I can sit my pergola, have a coffee. <laughs> and back, yeah, you got plants. And yes. Yeah, to go out in Australia, you know, you literally see the whole sky, basically. You cannot do that in Singapore, right? No, no. Like Singapore, you, I mean, that's where we come from, eh? Uh, we live in the flats and uh, I see a lot of people only go to the shop all the time in the shopping center to get nice and cool in shopping center. Now, mm-hmm. if at home, you can't own air condition every day. It's too expensive. You only turn on when in the room and you go to bed. But when you sit in the kitchen and the lounge, people are happy to turn on the fan, but it's not cool enough, you know. But Singaporeans get used to it, that weather. For me now, it's getting more hotter in Singapore. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely getting hotter. Yeah. Everybody the... goes to shopping center, everyone. Yeah. yeah. I can see people even have a coffee, to have a lunch, people go shopping center. I think it's cheaper to go shopping centre, have a lunch. <laughs> Different from here. Yeah, I think in Singapore, you can never get used to the weather, right? You you still want to hide away, you know, either at home or in the shopping centre with your aircon on. Yeah. Where to go in Singapore? Yeah, also, you, yeah. <laughs> you, you can't go anywhere, you know. You can't go to the picnic. It's too hot. At the beach, you can't swim. Do I need to go shopping center, have a lunch, have coffee, spend a few hours and then go back to your place? That's what people do mm. a lot. You know what I mean? Not used to be at Kampong, a bit different. When we live at Kampong, you know, when parents go to work, we got with the neighbor together, uh, the house you don't have to lock. You know what I mean? It's, it's a lot different. Your sisters, your brothers in Singapore would have told you, like, keep you up to date about how they are doing in Singapore. You know, how how do you think, you know, 
in comparison with Perth, with Australia, how do you think their life was in the past? Uh, a lot different. A lot. Like, uh, example, let's see. Uh, because I have no family here, mm. and uh, just between me and Stephen and the kids, is uh, more like freedoms. You know what I mean? More freedoms and... Uh, yeah, I think it's more free and more relaxed here, I, I think, mm. compared to Singapore. People here, you don't have to, I found out, you don't have to wear any expensive stuff, you know, clothes. <laughs> you can buy, yeah, I, I, I went back, I see everyone, I can see people put clothes expensive, what they wear, you know what I mean? Like here, it doesn't matter. You go to the shop, you could wear t-shirt and thong, it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's very much the Australian culture, right? Very laid back. Yes. It's not just culture. Also, people think like, why to put those things, expensive stuff to go to the shop? You know what I mean? Yeah, people just more relaxed. They just... Do you think compared to people in Singapore, maybe your siblings, that you are kind of happier in Australia? Yes. Yep. I can see that. In Singapore, and here I can see. But, um, of course, uh, here you have um, stay in the house, like you, you more freedoms, you know what I mean? Singapore, everything have to be like more family. Yeah, that's, that's life, I think, in Singapore. You have to, I'm sure you'll be the same too, like, Donny, we go, we end to see family, go to the weddings, you know, before wedding, you, you spend days and days get to know family, all those things, yeah. and funerals. More or less, at we end, you plan to go to spend time with the family. Now, can I ask you about uh, the work uh, again? I forgot to ask you just now. Uh, you told me before that you joined the union. In a... yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Tell us about that. Very. Uh, I joined unions. Um, a friend asked me, could you, because I talk a lot, friend said, why don't you join the union? And I said, yeah, why not? Give a go, I try. And uh, very interesting, the union, and here it's not the same, it's different. Mm. I love it, I love it. Mm. You, you can uh, negotiate with the, the boss, and then you can uh, fight with them. And uh, you, f you, you feel like, oh, I'm, I'm the top person to, when you negotiate with them. Yeah. I always get demoted <laughs> because I'm the union person. You did? Yep. This yep. was where? The hotel? I work in the factory. No. Factory. In, uh, the unions, I represent the company. I work in the factory. Mm. There's a lot, uh, a lot, the employee from Malaysia from Johor and they can't speak English much and they're very quiet and then they get uh, injured all the time so mm. and I represent for them this one is the Swiss factory is that right yes ah, yeah. okay so you have to the man manager was Swiss yeah the company company the was company. Swiss yeah, so yes. when you negotiate it was a Singaporean or a foreigner or they mix. Mix. Yeah, yeah. They have, uh, they have their own people, and plus we have Singaporean who represent, uh. like in the factory, uh, department. So they also there. Yep. Mm. What did you ask for? Uh sometimes the girls, they have injured, and uh, so I said, okay, I represent them, and we fight for it to make sure that. The safety is there. Mm. Uh, make sure they get some pay. If mm. you, you know, sometimes you get injured, you're not going to get any pay. You know, pay for the doctor or those things, yeah. And the management agree? Uh, they agree, take longer. Take longer to, to agree. But uh, usually like this, they are really small things, not really big thing, you know what I mean? And you say you got demoted. What did you get demoted to? 
because I I out from the my department all the time. Every meeting they have, I just walk off and then they call me. So I have to stop my work. So I go maybe three hours and then they send me goes for uh two weeks off like they have represent union each company and then they have like uh uh conference all those things so all the time i out from the from the work so, yes so it wasn't punishment right for being in a union do you think but you won't say the company there but i think yes mm. of course if you're not there all the time and then you get paid so you know what i mean because that's a, every year going to be the same the punishment there they're not telling you but it is you said earlier that the uh, singapore and the australian unions are quite different because we work in the factory the union is so small that was under raja ratnam mm. i think was under him he was the uh, before he became prime minister president president before he became president is the leader of the union you mean devanaya devanaya yes uh, devanaya devanaya yeah he's the one who's uh, the union hate union first in you know. ntuc right yeah. yeah ntuc yeah i think the different here people can protest mm you uh, know people can go up uh, doesn't matter even you not working there but you see can help you can protest you know what i mean but singapore you can't do that do you think it's important to be able to protest i think yes mm. because uh we have protest before in the factory but very small you know we go out uh, that time I was devania said uh we got to fight for this so we start having protest uh but very small you know what i mean mm. like here is more stronger strong and uh, quite big to the members yeah that's right i mean you can walk down the street right and you yeah. have banners and everything yes yeah. I did follow Stephen few times, so yes. Ah, uh, for the UWA. Ah, uh, at Murdoch before they have, ah, so you go there okay. and see what. Yeah, yeah, yes, it's interesting. Mm. They are more stronger, you know what I mean. Mm. Hopefully, they still stay there. Who knows? Mm. When you were in Perth, did you join a union? No, no, no. Because I only work. Three hours there, three hours this, you know, not, not long term until Stephen have to finish his PhD, and then uh, scholarship finish. So I work to get the job so we can support each other, the kids. Then I worked there for twenty years, more than twenty years. I worked in here. Yeah, I think that I that was a challenging time, right? Financially for him yes. to do do his PhD. Yes, I think I work longer here than Singapore. <laughs> more oh, more than twenty years, years uh. Yeah, yes, oh, rough, maybe thirty years I work here. Because by the time the children are old enough, right? Yeah, indeed. Uh, one of them nearly finished high school, you know. Um, both of them, the big one at uni, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Stephen's life then became very different, right? Before that, he was a, a worker, and then he did his PhD, and then he got a job at Murdoch, and then UWA. Yeah, and life life totally changed. Oh yes, both of us changed a lot because he worked a factory before, mm. and then went back to school when we have two kids. And then start go to uni, and yes, was really tough time that time. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I forgot to emphasize that right. That usually we think uh, if someone marry and go overseas is to have a good life, right? You know, someone who's well to do. But not in your case. You had to struggle in the beginning. No, we we both have to struggle. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. Uh, but just lucky because you do well at uni. So he get that little bit money of scholarship, so so we can manage, you know, not much, but you know. 
Yeah, Stephen's story is quite remarkable. There are not many academics, you know, who were previously workers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. He's worked in the factory before, <laughs> so hard. People didn't realize, always asking me, uh, what do you do? Your husband now lecturer at UW, he's a doctor. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you do? Sometimes I feel a bit shy to reply. I said, I'm working in the cafe. I'm not a academic. I just work in yeah. the in the restaurant, you know. Do you feel that there is still that that also in Australia, or maybe less than in Singapore? You know, Singapore people are so job conscious, right? Uh, not here. Hmm. I mean, it's always that question, right? What's your job? Yeah. How much you yeah. make? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Like here, oh, your husband got a good job. Oh, what you do? People doesn't care. You know? People don't care. Yeah, no, not at all. Different from Singapore. You always have the competition there, you know. Mm. I know it's hard Singapore, it's not easy, but that's life in Singapore, you mm. know. You got no choice. I just have one last question for you, uh, Norma, uh, which is uh, what do you think about being part of the Madeka generation? Does that mean anything to you? I think I, um, I left long ago only that that year that i was i remember madeka mm. Mm. uh i don't know i think it's good i think good in what sense uh we more independence in singapore mm. not under british anymore mm. and uh i suppose we singapore only an island it's not a big country you know so we we trying to different from um, Malaysia or because Singapore is more like trying to get along to everybody, you know. Do you think that? Do you think it's important that you know uh, the country recognize the Madeka generation, people of your generation? Yes, I think. <laughs> yep, because we're the one who face that. Mm. You know, they had, there's a time that remember curfew, you know, the road all shut, you, you cannot go out, you cannot go to school. And then there's a big fight between, I remember that uh, when we live in Kampong, uh, they have suddenly curfew and then Chinese and Malay fight things, you know. And, uh, and then, yeah, I think it's recognized that. Yeah, was your kampong affected by the by the race riots? Kampong. Ah, was it affected? Uh not really. Hmm. I only remember at the uh, um Jalan Afifi, I think I heard uh, um they got a lot of gangs. And our area is not, but um the road being shut, so we all in the house, yeah, all the, the guys take turns, look after the aerial, you know, the men carry all those bar. Hmm. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah. Singapore has changed so much, right? Since the 40 years you have left. Yes, uh, changed a lot. What are a the lot. places that uh, you are, you know, quite sad that they have gone? I think uh, everything is flat now. It's no more kampong. There's not much tree. You know what I mean? But the population getting bigger. Mm. So Singapore have to, the government have to do that. No choice. Compared to other countries, I think Singapore do well anyway. Should Singapore maybe do more to preserve its heritage? Conserve some places, maybe some old places? Yeah, some places. Depend what government want to do. You know, mm. if they need the place, the land, they want to build a house, then they have to demolish. Yeah, so many things have been demolished, huh? Yeah, a lot, a lot. Not much left, I think. When we was there, we went to the uh, Baba aerial heritage, heritage place. Quite nice. Emerald it's, Hill aerial, is it? Yeah, not much heritage in Singapore now. 
everything been demolished. I still looking the factory I work. I know JTC is there. There is a factory component. Too. Swiss factory. I mean, if it's Swiss, it should be quite easy to find out, right? Because not many Swiss factory. Yeah, but they didn't call Swiss. They called something the factory. Yeah. The uniform we wear, blue color. All right. Blue color uniform. They have a uh, name tag, embroidery on the side, on the left hand. Yeah, I'll try to find out what that, the, that factory is. Yeah, they don't call Swiss. They have their own name, the factory. Mm. Okay. All you can remember, we all put on blue color of uniform. Mm. And I remember JTC too. JTC, yeah. Fa yeah, mm. the factory. Well, if I remember, I will let you know. All right. Thanks so much, uh, Norma, for your time. Oh, I hope so. Uh, what did I say? <laughs> <laughs> your life is actually very interesting right now i know a bit more about it well it's already 68 years old so life changed a lot you know yeah now it's more like we not rich but we're happy yeah what are you uh, planning to do in the next 10 years uh, Stephen going to be retired soon, mm. next mm. few years. We bought the caravan and the mm. car, so we're going to traveling. Just traveling Australia, you know. Uh, we're not going overseas anymore. Uh, the most I only spend time with my family in Singapore. And uh, just spend time in Australia. Australia is big. There's a lot of things you can do. Mm. Hopefully, I'm still here. Of course. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. So we can do a lot of things to relax. Yeah. You know? And you love to jog, right? You love to run. Yeah, I do my running every morning. Mm. Um, I do like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I do my running. And Tuesday, Thursday is my swimming. Mm. Where do you swim? Is it's a pool? In a pool. Oh, In a okay. pool, indoor, which I joined the members and I got a lot of all the ladies. Mm. Yeah, do some exercise and, uh, and then get together, have a coffee. Once a year, we go out. We stay somewhere two nights or just for the ladies. Yeah, it's good. It's mm. good. All right. Thanks a lot, Norma. We'll catch up again when you are back here. When, when are you planning to come back here? Oh, my, sis, my niece getting married next mm. year on May. May. So I'm hoping to go back just for one week. Okay. If they have no problem there, you know, you just don't know. And uh, COVID come back again, who knows, mm. you know? Mm. So, yeah, on me, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll see you soon again. Yep, i see yeah. you again. And uh, thanks a lot. Hopefully, I can do something for you. <laughs> <laughs> something that I can't remember at all. <laughs> some things you can remember, some things you can't, right? That's quite normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I when I see this map, I know this map, uh. but uh, I can't remember the company name because we work two, three places, uh, different job, but mm. in the same area where's the Kalang, so you can't remember. Yeah, Kalang Basin, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, there's all factory there, all factory. Yeah. Yeah, we will get to the bottom of it. Yeah. 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 Thanks a lot, Norma. No problem. You take care. Uh, you take care too. I will. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah.